you have already seen the different pieces of the single object tracking filtering recursions. You know that every sequence of data association hypotheses contributes with one term to the posterior. You also know how to compute the density given a sequence of data associations, and you have seen how to compute the weight or the probability of a data association hypothesis, at least in a single update. With the risk of being slightly repetitive, we will now put the pieces together and present a complete conceptual solution to single object tracking that we could, in theory, use to recursively compute the exact posterior at any time k. Let us first summarize the main results that we're about to present. Suppose we have expressed the posterior at time k minus one as a sum over all possible sequences of hypotheses up to time k minus one of a weight w times the density p of x k minus one. Here, theta one to k minus one denotes the sequence of hypotheses up to time k minus one. And both the weight and the density are functions of that sequence. For the density p, we use subindices k minus one given k minus one, which indicates that we are expressing the density of x at time k minus one based on measurements up to time k minus one. One can show that the weight is the posterior probability of the data association sequence, whereas the density is the posterior of x k minus one, given both the data and the data association sequence. However, we are not going to prove that they have this interpretation in this video. What we will show is that both the predicted density and the posterior at time k can be written on the same form, and we provide detailed expressions for how to compute both the weights and the densities. Even though the posterior at time k is on the same form, the summation is overall possible data association sequences up to time k, and it therefore generally contains more terms. We know how to compute the posterior density at time one on the above form. With the above results, we therefore obtain a recursive algorithm to exactly compute the predicted density and the posterior at any time k. Let us start with the prediction step and assume that the posterior at time k minus one is written as this mixture of densities. As always, we can use the chapman kolmogorov equation to perform the prediction step. We can then use the expression for the posterior at time k minus one to write the predicted density as a weighted sum of these integrals. If you look closely at the integral, you can see that it expresses the chapman kolmogorov equation for an individual density. The result of this integral is therefore the predicted density given a data association sequence theta one to k minus one, and we denote this as follows, where the subindices indicate that it is the density of x at time k given measurements up to time k minus one, and the superindex indicates that we condition on this data association sequence. We conclude that the predicted density is the sum over the weights w theta one to k minus one times the predicted density for the same sequence of associations. We note that the number of hypotheses does not change during the prediction step, and that the probabilities remain the same. The only difference is that we replace the posterior density of x k minus one, given a sequence of associations, with the predicted density, given the same sequence of data associations. Suppose the motion model is linear and Gaussian, such that pi k of x k given x k minus one is a Gaussian density with mean f times x k minus one, and covariance q evaluated at xk. If the posterior density at time k minus one, given a data association sequence theta one to k minus one, is also Gaussian, then the predicted density under that hypothesis is given by the prediction step in a regular comma filter. That is, the predicted mean is f times the previous mean, whereas the predicted covariance is f p f transpose plus q. Under the linear and Gaussian assumptions, the prediction step therefore consists of performing one common filter prediction for each hypothesis. If we instead assume that xk is some nonlinear function, fk minus one of xk, it is typically no longer possible to find a closed form expression for the predicted density. However, we can use a Gaussian filter for nonlinear models to approximate the predicted density as Gaussian. Simple alternatives may be to use an extended comma filter or a curvature comma filter. You may recall the video where we visualized the conceptual solution. In this video, we present detailed equations for the conceptual solution, and we return to the same visualization to confirm that it matches the equations that we present here. To briefly summarize the simulation scenario, 
we assume linear and Gaussian motion and measurement models, pi k and g k. The initial prior is Gaussian, and pd is 0 0.9. We obtain two detections at time 1 and one detection at time 2. In this video, we focus on time step 2, and therefore ignore measurements at time 3. In these figures, the green curve to the left is the posterior at time 1, and the green curve to the right is the predicted density. We have three association hypotheses at time 1. To perform prediction, we predict the densities for the different hypotheses, one at a time, and then sum up the results. For the undetected hypothesis, the weight times the posterior at time 1 is this red dashed curve. After the prediction, the density has a larger covariance, which yields a flatter red dashed curve. Similarly, for the other two hypotheses, the covariance has also increased. Consequently, the overall predicted density is flatter, and the two peaks that we see in the posterior at time 1 are no longer visible.